after our hearts and that it will cause us to see the hour and the day that we are in but also this is a day for every, this is a message for every day as well I mean it's my heart's troubled I seen on the news last night where President Obama has told Israel that they're going to have to give up all land all the way back to their landline of 1967 America hasn't learned nothing. Look what happened to our nation after our government was involved in making them give up the land of Gaza. When they caused Israel to go in there and forcibly remove their people. It's been living there ever since. God restored them back to that land. I'll tell you, our country better wake up. I said, Lord, my goodness, now I can understand what I was seeing. I tell you, the judgments of God is really going to be poured out against this nation. Our country would be wise if they leave Israel alone. But you just think about it. it, it release, they don't have any bargaining power or nothing else if they come obedient to that. I was telling my son last night, if I was Israel, I would say, uh-uh, that ain't going to happen. Because I tell you what, and they just might do that, and that might be what's going to bring forth the, the war that's supposed to come against Israel that's spoken of in the Bible. What they call the, the Battle of Armageddon. And children God, we are living in the last times, and God's word has been fulfilled. And God has been showing me things that's been going on in behind the scenes with the government and what they've been trying to do to Obama is how to bring down this country and and how there's been such a rise in the Muslims coming to this country I mean they're just coming in by the droves and they're trying to instill their laws and all that mess in our country and you know a Muslim they're never happy I was reading a missionary book and uh, of the missionaries that were captured and kept in uh, captivity for a little over a year. And they were taken by the Muslim Brotherhood over there uh, in the uh, Philipp uh, Philippines. I'll get it out in a minute. And, and of course, you know, they formed some kind of a bond while they were in that captivity with them and they stayed on the run constantly constantly and she asked him and she said well why are y'all doing this they said because we're wanting to force the government here in in the Philippines to give back our land a part of the Philippines that they think it's theirs and she said well what are you gonna do after that if they was to give it to you he said well all oh, we'll want the rest of it he said, not only that, he said, we deserve the land and the whole world. And he said, we will not stop or be satisfied until we conquer all lands. So that's the enemy that we are up against in this day and hour. And believe me, they will do anything to bring about their end. They'll murder, they'll kill, they'll steal, they'll lie. And they'll do all these things to try to bring about because they give excuses and say that it's okay for them to do it by the Koran as long as this brings their outcome. And believe me, children of God, if they was to get power over all lands, you're talking about a slaughter that people have never seen. If you don't come over to their way of thinking, they will behead you. And they will kill you. And I'm telling you, children of God, our president is a Muslim. And I seen someone had shared in 2008, it was a black minister on YouTube. Somebody shared it on Facebook. In 2008, he was saying all the things that, that I guess God revealed to him. I believe God did because it was along the same lines God had been talking to me about. And he 
said before, he said in the third year of Obama, and he said this in 2008 now. Now this is 2011. He said in the third year of Obama's presidency, he said the Palestines, he said the Middle East over there, they're going to give him ben, uh, oh, Biden, a Laden, whatever you call his name. What is his name? Bin Laden. Said so they're going to give him Bin Laden, but when they do, they're going to expect him to give them Israel. And look how quick he's moving right after they give him Bin Laden. I'm telling you, children of God, the president that we have is for our fault. He does not want America to remain the re America that we have always known. He's trying to carry it into a, poly a, a Muslim country. And he'll stand up there and he'll lie. It's got why well, I can't even hardly make myself listen to him. Because I know what's coming out of his mouth is lie, 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 lie. And he'll smile up there and tell you that he loves you and that he cares for you when in his heart he does not. All he's purposing in his mind to carry out his agenda. And he's going to do it. Children of God, and it's been given power over him to do it. I think the church better wake up. And I, I tell you, America, if they force Israel, they said on there that our country and about three or four others, if Israel was not going to do it, that they were going to force them to do it. My goodness, my heart is broke. I said, my goodness. I said, God, your church has got to wake up in America. they got to wake up. Lord, if we don't, this thing, this country is going to fall completely and it's going to be broken. It's going to be grind to powder. You don't mess with God. People got to understand that. You do not mess with God and his people. I know that we are a spiritual Israel, but I'm telling you, God has never forgot that natural Israel. And I tell you what, if we can look and see what's come up against our country since we were a part of causing Israel to give up the land of Gaza. And you think it's been bad for that. You ain't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to get in my message. I felt to bring out some of that. Hallelujah. And I said, Lord, that opens up much to me, Father. And because the devastation that I seen is on such a grand measure. It was so great that it was either going to cause our country to humble or it was going to grind it to powder. Okay, children of God, it's time to humble. My goodness. We've we got to be of a humble spirit. If, if we don't, we're going to humble or be destroyed one way or the other. I want you to turn to Matthew 22. Lord, I commend this service into your hands, Father. God, anoint my vessel to minister this word that you have spoke to my heart. Because, Lord, I know and I realize this truly in my heart I can do nothing without you. God, I don't even want to try. And Lord Jesus, my heart is heavy today because of the things that's going on and how your word is rapidly, rapidly coming to pass. And God, many, they just go on in their own way thinking that things are just going to be the same as it always has been. But God, they're going to wake up one morning and everything is going to be such drastically changed. God, I'm just asking you, Lord, to waken us, Lord, and help us. Help us to enter in where you want us to be, Father. Oh, dear Lord God, and I pray for my country. And I pray for other nations as well, Lord. God, help us to turn back to you, Lord. Help us to turn back to the old paths and landmarks, Father, that you have set up. Lord, once we were a blessed nation, Father. But 
that now we're cursed, Father, Lord Jesus, and rapidly, rapidly, things are upon us, Father, Lord, it's a time for us to be truly led of the Spirit of where we go and where we are at, because, Lord, many can be in the wrong place at the wrong time and even suffer, suffer loss of their own selves and their families. Father God, I'm asking you to help us all to be truly led. God, what to do each day, Lord. Help us, God, to get used to getting up in the morning and asking for your guidance throughout the day, Lord. And if we don't have a peace about something, that we don't do it. Because this is a time that your people, they truly need to hear your voice, Father. God, I'm asking you, Jesus, to bless our hands, the minister's hands, God, to get this word out while we have time. Lord, day is swiftly passing. Lord, night is so upon us, Father. And Lord, your church say they see, but they don't see, Father, because if they did, their actions would be different. Lord, as I remember that missionary from the Ukraine, Father, as he said this as a little boy. He said, when the Holy Ghost, when that movement went forth out of California, Lord, and it went across this land and lands of the world. He said, prophecy started coming to being spoken that their land was going to go under captivity, Father. And that, Lord, that they need to get their self prepared to face what was coming against them. He said some left the country because they heard it and they believed it and they didn't want to be there to go through it. He said some didn't believe it and said, oh, that ain't going to happen. And then others that stayed, Lord, and they truly believed what you spoke, Lord, they prepared themselves and got themselves ready. And he said he remembered the day when the tanks come down their streets. And his country went into captivity. He said, everything that was spoken come to pass. And he said, all the people that said, oh, it ain't coming to pass. He said, it didn't stop it. Whether we choose to believe what you're speaking now, Lord, it does not stop it. Help us to enter on in, God. Help us to enter in, Jesus. Oh, God, wake me up, Father. Wake me up, Lord. Wake your whole church up, Jesus. Don't let us slumber and sleep, Lord. Help us to be sober-minded. Lord, I love you and I praise you, Jesus. Lord, move for your whole body. Move for your children. Stir our hearts, God. Stir our hearts, Jesus. Lord, I love you and I praise you, Lord. In your precious holy name, Jesus. Amen. And the reason I tried, I prayed, I felt to pray along those lines. When I read that missionary book, which they were missionaries in that part of the Philippines, but they had went to America for a short spell, and their anniversary had come up. And someone had told her about and she said, I really kind of felt guilty even about making those reservations because she said people give and they help us. And, and she said, I really just didn't feel completely right about using extra money that we had. I think it was personal money they had. And she said, I, I called and I made reservations on this little island off of the, at the Philippines for us to celebrate our anniversary before we had to go back and live for, for many more years before we went back to the States. And while they were staying there celebrating their anniversary, that's when the Muslims come in by boat because they were staying on this little island off from the, the main island. And, and, and she said that's when they were abducted. They come in and they tuck them out of their rooms and and tuck them into captivity and, and they were trying to ransom them back to wherever country they were from and, uh, and she said Lord 
She said, Father, she said, undoubtedly, I didn't hear your voice. And she said, I was at the wrong place. She said, I caused me and my husband to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. And, and, that, and that broke my heart. And her husband ended up being killed while they was trying to rescue him. And just young, they, he was in his early 40s. And I think she was pushing 40. And they went through such hardships. There was times that she said she felt like if it hadn't been for God, she would have just completely broke down. But she said God gave her strength and kept her. And she said it was her husband that kept her in a sound mind with Jesus' help. Because she said when things got so unbearable, she said that uh, she said he helped talk her into coming out of depression. And she said I would have been lost in depression if it hadn't been for him. She said, I'm so thankful that we were together at least. And, you know, it just broke my heart. And I said, God, it's so important. When your children are leaving the country or, or going any place because there are so many bomb threats. There's so, you know, they said they're going to get even for bin Laden's death. So really be sure where you go in this country. Because you can be at the wrong place at the wrong time and be blowed up. I even heard some others' testimonies along that line that God tried to stop them and they really didn't feel a peace, but they went ahead anyway. And they end up suffering the consequences. So that's the reason I say really, really, really seek out God's will for whatever you do. And that's that's all of us. And I ask the Lord just help us all to be mindful of what you want us to do. But I'm going to get on in the Word. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, reading that book just, I felt for them. I, I mean, my heart just went out to them. But it also shows you the power of God that he can keep you through anything. <laughs> through anything. And God ended up delivering her. And he delivered him too. He went by the way of the grave. But she went home to America. And she gave up the Philippines. She didn't never go back to the Philippines to work. She said that was more of her husband's burden than hers. And she said while she was with him, she obeyed that burden that he felt because she loved him and she loved the Lord. But she said she feels now to just stay in America and do what she can for God here. But anyway, let's start reading at verse 1. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 1. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. You know, I tell you, it makes the king wroth when he's went to all that trouble. To kill the fatted calf to prepare such a great supper. And then he bid his guests to come and they will not come. It causes him to be wroth, don't it? Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fetlands are killed and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Is this not what the Lord Jesus Christ is sending forth his servants today to reap in the harvest? Because the Lord has prepared a great supper. And he has prepared his word and he has given it unto us to take it with deliverance, with the power and authority to speak it forth in his name, Jesus. And he has bidden all to come, hallelujah, both bad and good, hallelujah, but many. They rather they go in their own way and they don't want to hear what the Lord says and they will not come. But they made light of it. See, they counted as naught. They didn't count it as a serious thing. And many today, it grieves my heart, they counted a light thing of what God wants us to do. But children of God, we have got to get the mindset in us that what God wants us to do is a very serious thing. And we need to somehow pray our way through that we can become obedient to it. Because if we don't, we're going to suffer the consequences. And some of the consequences are going to be high. 
very high. And when we look at it from behind, and we'll say, Lord, why did not I listen? Lord, why did not I do? Lord, what I needed to do. Hallelujah. Why didn't I hear your voice when you told me to do something different? But he's bidding now. He's telling them to all come in. He's got everything ready. You remember, Mama. <laughs> and yourself as well. When you get supper ready, you expect the family to come. They better not stay out there playing when you holler for Johnny and Susie. <laughs> Supper's ready. Come on, it's hot. Well, if they just disregard you and say, ah, I'll eat later. And stay out there. Well, I tell you what, when they finally do come home, if you don't go out there and get them and march them home, <laughs> time they come home, that supper's cold, not fit to eat, and you're ready to give them a good uh, tanning on their little bottom. <laughs> Next time I call you to supper, you better come, and I mean it. <laughs> well, that's the way the Lord is with us. I tell you what, it, we, we better start listening to the voice of God. It will be well with us if we do. If we don't, we're going to suffer the consequences. You know, because there's always consequences for your actions and your choices. That's always going to be it. Because why? He's a good parent. And he always causes consequences for action. If it's a good action, obedience, then there's good consequences. If it's, there's disobedience, then there is hard consequences to teach us a lesson to do better well my goodness Lord help me not to be so stubborn headed that I don't listen to you but that you'll help me Lord help me Father to move on in where you want me to go but they made light of it and went their ways one to his farm another to his merchandise see they were too busy oh Father we've got, we got families we got to support Father we've got businesses we've got to run what do you mean bidding me to go out and speak your word Lord, I got to do this, I got to do that. And that's what they're really saying right there. One said he had went to his farm, another to his merchandise. In other words, what they had to do was more important than what God told them to do. And listen what happens. And the remnant took his servants. Hallelujah. And entreated them spitefully and slew them. You know why? Because they were so rebellious and stubborn and hard-headed and hard-hearted they didn't care what god wanted their way was better he's talking about the church here he's not talking about the world but he's talking about the church and listening to him and coming obedient to him and he said but when the king heard thereof he was wroth it means he was angry and he sent forth his armies my goodness that's been wroth isn't it he sent forth armies not a shepherd, but armies. You know, we got to understand what God is saying to us. And destroyed those murderers. And burned up their city. And that's exactly what's going to take place against the rebellious that's in the house of God. God is saying enough is enough. It's like when Moses come down from the mountain. And when he saw the children of Israel play. And they were fornicated and dancing around that golden calf. He drew a line and a sign. And Moses said them that are with me and God come over here. And you that are over there with the fatted calf. I mean with the golden calf. You stay over there. And what happened? Joshua. And all the men of valor and of war, they took up their swords and they went over there and they slew every one of them. Man, woman, and child. Didn't matter who they were. And I tell you what, a lot of times our children, they suffer because of our decisions. Because, believe me, the disobedient and rebellion, their children will suffer right along with them. And meet the same fate of that household. Now I'm talking to the church, I'm talking to the world. I, that is a given. We know that. It's the reason the Bible tells us to pray that we be counted worthy, to escape the snare that's going to cover the whole earth, and that we'll be counted worthy, that, that our feet won't be taken with the wicked. Do what's fixing to hit this land right here? There's many feet are going to be taken. 
We better be praying. We better be getting ourselves in a humble state in our spirit and our heart. Or I'm telling you, children of God, your feet will be taken. And I feel the power of the Holy Ghost as I'm saying this. I know many say, well, I'm getting tired of hearing it. Well, I'm telling you, you better be breaking, breaking under this. Not hardening. Because, Sister Pam, this is something that we have got to open ourselves up to God because He means business with every one of us. God, help us to hear. Help us, Lord. Or many are going to be standing naked with shame in that day. He said, but when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up the city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. They were not worthy. That counts who's in the world that won't listen, and that counts them that are in the church that are of a rebellious spirit. It counts for all of it. They were bidden and they would not come, so they're not worthy of what I have prepared. Oh, I want to be worthy. Don't you want to be worthy? Oh, I do. Hallelujah. It says, Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. So he's going after a new remnant. Go ye therefore into highways, as many as you shall find bid to the marriage. See, first he went to the church. First he went to the church, and them that would not listen he destroyed. Now he's going to the highways and hedges. He's bidding all this in the world to come. Hallelujah. And it goes on, it says, To those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. His house was full. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. You know why it said they... Got, they uh, gathered up both bad and good. That means the ones that would hear out of the church, they gathered them in. The ones that were wicked of the uh, sinful nature that did not know God, they gathered them in and they gave their heart over to the Lord. They gathered in bad and good. It's like catching when a fisherman goes out and he catches and he casts that net there into the uh, river or into the ocean or into the uh, river or wherever he's fishing at and he brings in that net he catches all bad and good fish and he goes through that net and the good he'll keep out and the bad he'll throw away hallelujah and that's the way it is when the Lord casts out his great uh, fishing net in this world. He'll pull it in and them that will receive of him, them that will be a uh, hearer of his voice, he will keep. And them that are stubborn and rebellion, he will cast them back out. And he's just for doing it. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. That means one tried to stay in and not listen to God. Thinking, well, I'll be okay. You know, I'm coming in here. I'm fixing to eat this great big feast. It don't matter what the king says, but I'm going to be here anyway because I come in. But see, he wasn't found worthy once he got in there. You know why? Because his heart wasn't pure for, before God and because he would not listen. Because as you read above this, where as this parable is going on, it's him that hear. It's here them that receive. It's them that come. He said, come unto me. It's them that will do that. They're the ones that are getting and reaping of the benefit. But them that are rebellious, the ones that were rebellious up here, they were killed off. And then there was one that tried to make it into the wedding supper and not put on a garment. And what happened? Let's listen to what happened. And he said unto him, friend, how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. He stood there speechless. Because he had no way that he could come back with anything because he knew then of his disobedience. He knew that he did not put his garment on. He thought his way was better. He didn't need to listen to God. I tell you, that spirit is through the church so bad right now. It just breaks my heart. It causes me to weep. 
and tears flow like a river. And, and then you've got them saying, oh, we, we're woke up, we're not asleep. Well, I'm not seeing it. Because I'm telling you, when the church is truly woke up, you will see revival pour out. People are running to and fro doing anything and everything they want to do with the pleasures of this flesh instead of getting in the altar. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away. And he just didn't take him away and just put him anywhere, but listen what he said. And cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. I tell you what, children of God, we are the chosen people of God. Hear his voice. Come obedient to him. Humble yourself. Be submissive to him. And I tell you what, you will reap the reward that he has prepared for us. Now I want us to turn to Revelation 16. Children of God, we've got to wake up because these things are winding up. The word of God is coming to pass quickly. I've heard many say, oh, he ain't coming in my lifetime. I've heard some even say, well, you know, you're not going to see it. Maybe of the ones that are being born right now, they might see it. They better wake up because this thing's coming up on them unaware. They're the ones that are sleeping. Hallelujah. And th these are so-called Christians too. These are not people in the world. I tell you, the world has more sense than the church world, that the church world or even God's church has right now. Because they they're getting alarmed when the true church is still just mosing along like ain't nothing, that, you know. Oh, God will take care of me. Yeah, he'll take care of you if you'll be obedient to him. But I'm telling you, if you be disobedient, you're going to suffer the consequences. All I can do is just Tell people, be obedient, open my mouth, let God fill it. Warn them, forewarn them, and tell them. Then it's up to them. I, I am not going to waste my time trying to make people live by the Word of God. I ain't going to do it, can't do it. I wouldn't waste my time to do it. You couldn't do it either. We can't. We cannot do it. All we can do is preach it and let it go forth, and, and it goes out, and people either receive or reject. And the Bible tells me, woe to them that reject my Word and that are offended in my Word. Oh, I tell you, it just breaks my heart. But you know, I'm telling you, children of God, this is a time to wake up if it's ever been a time to wake up. We need to be doing and being busy about the Father's business. Hallelujah. I don't want to stand before Him on that day and not being busy about Him and doing what He wants me to do. Hallelujah. And that's the reason He said there's division among our families because we that are called, and when God speaks us to do something, and we try to do it, of course there's going to be upheaval. Of course they're going to try to fight you and stop you from doing whatever God's telling you to do, whatever it is. And that's where we have to take our stand. Say, God told me to do it, and I'm going to do it. And that's with your approval or without your approval. I'm going to do it. And then we'd be obedient to it. And God will make a way. He'll give us the strength when we feel like we don't have the strength. You'll come on, you'll feel it. You'll say, Lord, I want to be obedient, but Lord, I just don't feel the strength within me. you say, God, give me that strength to help me do it, Lord. And I tell you what, he'll swoop in like a mother eagle. Hallelujah. He'll swoop you up, and you'll feel that strength, that embodiment of him come in you. And there you go. You say, Whew, Lord, thank you. Now I can do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's all he's doing. He's just waiting for us to humble to him meekly. And say, Lord, I, I truly want to do this, Lord. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. God, help my spirit to be able to overcome this old flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you, God is so good to us. He loves his children. He, he, he don't want to see any of this come on us. It don't. It hurts his heart. He weeps. But it just it's just like you uh, correcting your children. You love them. You correct them. And when they don't... And when they be disobedient to you, it causes you to weep in your heart. Because many times they go on in the rebellion and they reap the consequences. Many young people have lost their lives because they would not listen to mother and dad. 
when they told them not to do such and such, they wouldn't have done it anyway. And they were at the wrong place at the wrong time, and something happened, and they were killed. I tell you, it's heartbreaking. Then those parents are left there to weep and mourn over their child, and because they were disobedient. Well, that's the way the Father is to us. And believe me, as, as compassionate as He is and full of love as He is, when it comes time for Him to weep, to bring in the wicked, put in the uh, sickle stick and gather all the wicked and cast them into hell in the wine press of God, He will do it. Even though He'll be weeping while He's doing it. But He will do it because He's a just God. He's a God of judgment. He's a God of love. He's a God of compassion. And He's also a consuming fire. Because we make our own choices. If anybody ends up in hell, it's their own fault. It's not God's fault. It's not any person on this earth that you can blame for that fault. Only us. Only us. If I end up in hell, I can only look at myself and, and, and count myself responsible. Because I'm telling you, God is going to look at me. He ain't going to hold nobody else responsible but me. And that's the way it's going to be for each and every one of us. But let's start reading in chapter 16, Revelation. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues in pain. Children of God, I'm telling you, this beast system is here. This beast system is already set up. And I'm telling you, it's fixing to go in and it's fixing to start uh, enforcing what it wants everybody to do. And we need to wake up. The mark of the beast is right here. It's already, the chip has been put in willingly by some, but there's going to come a day and a time where it ain't going to be a, a choice. They're going to say you're going to have to take it to be able to buy and sell. Well, children of God, I'm telling you, you better not take it. You better stand in God, trust in Him. It said right here, the seed of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And blessed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, and that way of the kings of the east might be prepared. In other words, the Lord is making a way and preparing for His Word to be fulfilled. He's talking about the wicked there. The, the Euphrates River was dried up so all these armies can uh, go forth and, and fulfill the Word that He has spoken. There won't be nothing in their way. There's going to be nothing hindering them to bring to pass the Word of God. Hallelujah. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils. Hearing of God, I'm telling you what. There are demons going through this land like never before. Demons reserved for this time to fulfill the word of God. This is a time that we truly need to make sure that we are sealed in God. Hallelujah. That we'll be protected against those things. And it says right here, it says, Work in miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world. To gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. They're making preparations. That's the reason these demons were sent out. They're gathering their great hosts. To go against God's people. He says, Behold, I come as a thief. He does come to as a thief to them that are sleeping, to them that not are waking. This thing is coming upon them unaware. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is that man that let me read that again. Blessed is he that watcheth and do what? Keepeth his garments. You know, I read to you over there at the wedding supper when you was bidden. All of them went in. They were given garments to go in with. But one made it in without a garment. But he was seen quickly. And he was cast out. He was, his hands and feet were bound. And then he was cast into outer darkness where there was gnashing of teeth. 
and right here he tells us he says and keepeth his garments so in other words he's telling you there is a chance for someone to keep their garments if you him to go to the trouble to say that there is a chance that you might lose your garment so people try to read things into things they'll say oh you know God we once saved always saved Yes, I know he said that he holds us in the palm of his hands. Our names are engraved in there. And he said not a one would lose. And no one could snatch us out of the palm of his hand. But that's the ones that are going to hear him. That's the ones that are obedient unto him. God is not a God over rebellious people. He's a God, I tell you what, that loves his children. And obedient children. He wants us to walk in his work. He said, but behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. At least he walk naked and they see his shame. And many are going to be found without their garments in this day when they think they are fully clothed. God help us. I'm praying this morning. I said, God, Lord Jesus, help me to keep my garment, Father. Help your children to keep their garment, Lord. Clothe us in your righteousness, Father. Clothe us, Lord. Because, God, we truly need you so. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. ready hallelujah and you say well there's still too much to be fulfilled believe me God can fulfill everything in this Bible with it in a snap of a finger if he wants to so that's the reason no man knows the day and the hour when he's gonna come but he tells us that we can, that the parable of the fig but not the fig tree but when we see that uh, buds are coming up on the trees we know that spring and summer spring is here and we know that summer is not at hand well, he's telling us in reference of when you see my word coming to pass, when you see it coming to pass like this, know that it's rapidly upon you. Know that it's right upon you. Hallelujah. But people are still blinded. It's only going to, it's going to take God to remove these blinders. And the ones that will not be willing, let God remove these blinders off their eyes. ever heard me being obedient to God be able to stand there and say Lord I didn't know hallelujah he's going to say do you not remember my servant Brenda Staggs that cried aloud it was even for hard for her to preach without crying because of the burden of souls and because of trying to tell you to wake up but you would not wake and we're going to stand there on judgment day naked without a garment facing the Lord with shame oh Jesus oh Jesus 
reading in verse 7 chapter 22 behold I come quickly blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book and I John saw these things and I heard them and when I had heard and seen I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things I was awoken out of sleep this morning. I had a dream that I was on my way to the shower in this house from the bedroom. And I had a towel wrapped around me to get from the bedroom to in, in the bathroom. The shower was right there. And as I was fixing to get in the shower, still had the towel on, and there come in this man, pushed me backward, and I fell back into the tub, and he tried to take my garment off that I had covering myself. He said, I'm going to have that garment. I said, no, you're not. And... He said, well, the ones that won't listen to me and do as I say. He said, I blind them. I put their eyes out. And he said, uh, and he started reaching for some acid. And he tried to put it in my eyes. But I bit down hard on his flesh and I was fighting. And I said, no, you're not going to take my eyesight. You're not going to take it. And when I woke up, the Lord started speaking to me. And he spoke that scripture to me. And Revelation 16 and the one that I read to you where it says behold I come as a thief blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame and I started praying Lord Father don't let me lose my garment Father don't let my eyes be put out Lord that I cannot see and I believe that dream the devil was trying to overcome my faith and overcome me and try to make me believe that he was able to put out my vision and take my garment that God has given me. But he's a liar and the father of it. Because see, the devil don't like me because he knows that I will not keep quiet. He knows when God tells me to do something, I do it. Because God has given me a forehead as a flint and put a backbone in me. I don't fear the faces. Because he told us in the Bible if we feared the faces, he would confound us before them. And I don't fear the faces because God put it in me, not because of me. Because I'm telling you, children of God, outside of God, I'd be knocked, my knees would be knocking. But when God tells me to speak something, I speak it. And it's up to the people whether they receive it or whether they reject it. But I'm telling you, children of God, we have got to be careful in this day. we got to tread softly. we got to start truly seeking for the will of God in our lives. The will of God is for you to be obedient to His Word. And then if you'll be obedient to His Word, He'll lead and guide you into everything He wants you to do as far as ministry, family, jobs, everything. He'll lead and guide you in it all. But when I walk, I still had my vision. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Haleluya. Glora ba toria esta ñora ba ye. Haleluya. I was telling someone the other day and I said, you know the the children of God, the servants that God is sending forth in this day. I said, if they're truly doing warfare down on their knees, I said, when they come up against a demon-possessed person and God tells them to deliver them, if they walk up and put their hands on them or even speak the word, they're not going to say, Peter, I know, and Jesus, I know. Uh, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know. But who are you? I tell you what, the devil's going to know who you are. And I told him, I said, I'm not boasting in myself. I know what God has put down in me. I said, I know the devil knows my name. Hallelujah. Because I go into battle with him every day. Hallelujah. On the front lines. You know, when people are in an army and, and, and they're fighting a warfare, you know, them that are fighting, they might not know them that much that's back there on the tail end of the things. But I'm telling you, they know them great warriors that's right there on the front line. I'm telling you, they know. Hallelujah. That's the way it is with the devil. He knows them that's going to hear the word of God and be obedient to it. And that's the ones he's trying to stop with all that he can. Ooh, but I got news for him. God's going to give us strength to go on, ain't he? Hallelujah. God's going to give us strength to deliver this thing, sis. He is. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, I love him. Praise him. Woo. Hallelujah. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then says he unto me, See, thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets. In other words, he said, Don't bow before me. I'm not the one that's worthy for you to be bowing before. You bow before Jesus Christ and him only. <laughs> See, even the angels, they know, don't they? <laughs> I believe they would be too scared to let any of us bow to them. I, they tremble. Because the Bible tells me that you know, that we run headlong in the things that were the angels feared to tread. Because we're blinded by flesh and we're blinded by our old self. Well, hallelujah. But the angels, you know, they know. Because <laughs> on it says, Thy brethren, the prophets of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. This right here is when the Gentile door closes. Because when it closes, when it shut, you're going to stand as you are. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. Oh, I love this right here. And my reward is with me. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right. I'm going to read that again. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have what? Right. Right to what? The tree of life. That they might have right to the tree of life. I tell you, that's the only way we're going to have right to the tree of life, that they may enter in through the gates into the city. And then what is outside of the city? It says, for we act without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters. And whosoever loveth and make a lie. It says, I, Jesus, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify of you these things in the churches. What is he talking about, my angel? He's talking about his messengers. His uh, called ones is to take forth this word. We have been sent forth to testify and to warn and forewarn and tell people and share of his goodness and mercy and his love. But it takes all of it, children of God. You can't just go forth with just one particular thing out of the word and expect people to come into the growth that need to go into Yes, we take salvation to the, one, to the sinner man. Yes, we do. And help them to find 
the greatness of him and, and his salvation and learn of him. But once they are born into the kingdom, then God wants them to start drinking the milk and growing. Then they get to go on into cereal. And then they get to go on into a, a food that's mashed up. And then they get to go on into solid food. And when you first start giving your children uh, solid food, you'll sit there and you'll watch them real close. Make sure they're not going to get choked. Hallelujah. That's the way the Lord is with us. And that's the way it is with the true men women of God that's carrying this word. And one thing about it, the people in the church have got to trust the leadership that God has put there. We know when to bear down. We know when to back off. We know when God is, is wanting that, when it's time for that person to go ahead and, and be brought on into something. We have to trust that they are truly being led by the Spirit of God. And I'm telling you, if you we just got to let God have His perfect work. And, and we'll set back and we'll let God have his perfect work even if they reject for a time I believe through prayer and supplication that God will be able to deal with that heart and bring them back in I do, I believe it but you know when someone has been with the church for a while there's time, if you kept a baby completely on milk or on soft food they would never grow on and, and get mature so there comes a time that God requires us to move to the next level. And we have to be willing to move to that next level. Or we'll stun our growth and we'll eventually die. But see, that's what God is trying to keep us from doing. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the bride say, This is the Spirit of God and the bride, His people say what are they saying come and let him hear us say come in other words he said in all that will hear them let them say come and let him that is thirst come whosoever will let him take the water of life freely the lord has given this thing out freely he is wanting he's calling all to come in take of my water hallelujah take of what i've got to give you i am wanting to produce in you for I have testified unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life. And out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. And that's another thing that once saved, always saved. There wasn't a chance for your name to be blotted out. It wouldn't say it. But many are going to have their names blotted out that was written in there from the foundation of the world. Why? Because they were stubborn. Because they were rebellion. They were not here. Hallelujah. When God talks to his children about rebellion, he ain't talking about the sinner or the wicked. He's talking to his people. Wake up. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. He which testified these things, surely... He that testify these things saith, surely. So who are they saying? Jesus. Jesus is the one that testified these things. And what does he say? Surely I come quickly. And I'm telling you what, children of God, we're coming to a place that God, that the Lord is not going to be tearing. His word is coming to pass too quickly. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 25 and 13. Watch therefore, for you know neither, neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. No man knows the hour. Not even Jesus knows the time. But he said we would know the season. And we do know the season. Only God knows the time and day and the hour. Luke 12 and 37. Blessed are these servant, those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching why would they make that statement if there was a chance that some are not going to be watching because they are he said when he cometh shall find watching verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself if you're watching you're girding yourself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them that means he will give us meat to eat he will give us what we need. Hallelujah. We that are 
girding ourselves and we that are watching. Them that are not, they're being as the five foolish virgins, but them that are being the five wise, God has given them to eat. He's given us what we need. Our garments are being refreshed. Our, our, our spirits have been refreshed. Our garments are, are made new. I tell you what, God is just helping us so, so wonderfully. He said, ye are all the children of light. This is First Thessalonians 5 and 5. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Children of God, you're going to have to watch and be sober. If you don't, the devil's going to end up getting your garment, and he's going to be putting your eyes out that you cannot see. That was the meaning of that dream. But he was coming against me on a one-in-one -one battle, trying to tear down my faith saying that he was going to be able to take my garment and, and put my eyes out. But see, I know in whom I trust. And I tell you, when I woke up, I went into prayer. I said, Lord Jesus, help me to keep my garment. Help me to keep my eyes. Because see, children of God, I know I don't keep myself. I'm not saying that in a boastful spirit. I'm saying that in a humble spirit. Hallelujah. Because I know God keeps me. He'll keep me with my garment. He'll keep me with my eyes as long as I am on that wall watching. As long as I'm engirding myself in Him. Hallelujah. And, tell, and I'm telling you, children, God, He's given me plenty to eat. Hallelujah. He's given me the meat of His Word. He's given me what I need to carry to His people. It goes on. It says, Revelation 3:11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. There was never a possibility that you could lose your crown. He wouldn't tell you that. The Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved of working unto God that needed not to be ashamed. There wasn't a chance that these things could be taken away from you. He wouldn't tell you to watch <laughs> and make sure that no man does take your crown. Tell them to get their own crown. Genesis 3 and 10, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And this is Adam speaking. He's telling this to God. He says, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. There's going to be many in this day. God's going to come searching for them, meeting them in their prayer rooms, and they're not going to be there. And then they'll try to hide their self. But see, God knows exactly where you are. <laughs> He'll go where you are. And you're going to still hear that voice. And you're going to know His presence. And you're going to be afraid. And you're going to be that standing there naked if you don't watch it. Myself included. That's a reason that I walk with a sober mind. <laughs> if I feel that soberness leaving me more, I tell you what, I say, Lord, give me a sober mind. You know, a lot of Christians think you're raiding up on their parade. I'm not saying you can't never laugh and be happy. Of course, the Lord wants us to be joyful. But he don't want us telling old jokes and joking and jesting and carrying on. That ain't joy. That's going against his word. <laughs> you know, we got to rightly divide. The Lord wants us to be happy. I'm smiling most of my time. Hallelujah. Unless I'm just under a real... But, well, I stay on a, under a burden for souls, but I'm still smiling. When I meet someone, I'm smiling. If I'm, most of the time, I'm smiling, even at home. <laughs> because I joy in the Lord. I love Him. Hallelujah. We don't have to walk around with an old solemn face all the time. There is a time for that, too. But we're going to smile and, and meet people with a smile. Hallelujah. If you're so heavy under the load that you can't be smiling and stuff to people, then you need to ask God to help help you be able to bear that load of burden of souls and, and do it with a smile when you need to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, God is so good. I love Him. But let's just be careful that we don't eat of the wrong tree and that we be found naked as Adam. Hallelujah. The first Adam. Ezra 9 and 6 and said, Oh, my God. I am ashamed and I blush. You know, that's what's the shame is today. People are not ashamed. They don't blush before God. 
they'll go in with sinful in their life and they expect God just to receive any old thing. But God wants us to recognize that we fall short of Him. I don't care if you live by everything in the Bible, you still fall short. Our old flesh still falls short. And we've got to realize this. Because children, the only thing that makes us worthy of salvation is His Son, Jesus. Otherwise, we're not worthy of anything that He has for us. We have got to rightly divide this thing. And he said, to lift up my face to thee, my God. For our iniquities are increased over our head. And our trespasses is grown up unto the heavens. Have you seen a field that's overtaken with weeds and thorns and briars? It just keeps growing. It seems like it just goes and goes. Well, that's the way he's putting in that reference, Lord. Our iniquities are so blatant and we have no shame about it Lord oh Lord help us Jesus you know we have got to get our hearts turned back to God we need to walk in humbleness Luke 12 and 40 be ye therefore ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour which you think not and many think he's not coming but oh he is he's not at hand let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. We need to. We need to let, just like the man that come up to us yesterday when we was having a sale in front of the church here. He said, y'all are Christians, aren't you? And of course, you know, I know we could see the sign on the church, but he explained to us what he meant. He said, well, the reason I asked you just look like Christians. And I said, well, thank you. <laughs> And the one that was with him said, well, we're Christians too. <laughs> I said, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> I said, that's good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then he just broke with tenderness in his heart, just weeping. He said, you know, he said, he said, once I thought I was saved. He said, I once thought I was where I needed to be, but... He said, I can truly say it, such and such date and time, and I mean, he had it down to the very minute and second. He said, a true conversion come in my heart. See, that's what we need. We need a true conversion. Because even Jesus turned and told Peter, he said, when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Peter had already been out preaching. He'd already been out raising the dead. he already been out healing the sick. But Jesus said, when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. What he was talking about, he said, when you receive the Holy Ghost, and that empowerment is put in you, then strengthen the brethren. He was telling him about a time when he would be with the Father. And when he was sending the Holy Ghost. Because <laughs> the Holy Ghost is what truly converts us. Hallelujah. It ain't what we stay with this mouth right here. Because you can repeat a prayer all day long. It won't change nothing. It's, it's what comes forth in that heart. <laughs> and it goes on. It says, Hebrew 10, 37. For yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. He's talking about Jesus. Because children, I'm telling you, his coming is not hand. He says, Behold, I come quickly. James 5 and 8. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord doth not. Now, what was the statement he said right there? Establish your heart. Let the Lord build you and strengthen you in his word. And you'll be ready. Hallelujah. Get ready. We're going somewhere. <laughs> in God. We're going somewhere in God. Just like when you tell the children, get ready to go to church. Get in there and get ready. It's time to go. Well, that's what the Lord's telling us. Get ready. It's time to go. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to be hearing that cry pretty soon. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love the Lord. I, his word refreshes me. My goodness, I just love him so much. Revelations 22 and 20. I want to read this again. He which testified these things said, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I believe we're getting close to the state and the time where that's going to be in our prayer. Lord, come Jesus. Because wickedness is growing gross. 
gross and darker and darker. And not only that, devastations and turbulent times and things are going to be so hard that the church is going to want the Lord to come. And, and I, I tell you, it, all these things are right up ahead of us. We need to get prepared. And we need to make ourselves ready. Be ready. It's just like someone, who was it? I can't remember. But anyway, it was someone was telling me that they were telling one of their sons, he was old enough to be there by himself. They said, Now get ready. If you don't get ready, I'm leaving you. And they messed around him all oh, they can leave me. <laughs> so he him hauled around. He wasn't ready. Everybody else was ready though. So mom and dad and the rest of his siblings, I got in the car and they started backing out of the driveway and he runs out, Hey, I'm not ready. Wait for me. And the father, he hollered out at him. He said, Son, I told you to get ready. If you weren't ready, I was leaving without you. He said, Bye. And they left him. So he went on back in the house and probably sulked. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they left me. <laughs> oh, but when Daddy tells you to get ready, if you don't get ready, he's going to leave you. He means it. <laughs> well, I'm just using that as a reference that when God's telling us to get ready because his coming is not at hand. So don't be found without your garment. Hold fast to your crown that no man takes it. Stand and faith believing. Don't let the devil or no one else rob you of your faith. <laughs> Don't let him put your eyes out. Don't let him have your garment. Hallelujah. Fight a good fight of faith. Endure hardness is a good soldier. Oh, I love the Lord. I'm fixing to turn the service.